In this lecture, we're going to talk about applications involving right triangles. So before we start solving any problems, we want to talk about sketching and labeling a triangle. Now when we draw out our right triangle, we're going to use the following notation when we're labeling it. A capital letter will rec represent an angle, and a lowercase letter will represent the side. Furthermore, the same letters are going to be opposite of each other on the triangle. So for example, if I were to draw out the ABC triangle with angles A, B, and C represented by capital letters, you'll see that we have sides, little a, little b, and little c, and the side is opposite the corresponding angle. So little a is across from big A. And a few things to remember for right triangles. We're going to use these rules to solve right triangles first. The Pythagorean theorem holds. So the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the square of the legs. Second, the three angles have to add up to be 180 degrees. And since we know that the right angle is 90 degrees, that means that the other two angles, A plus B, have to equal 90 degrees. And third, the definition of the trigonometric functions are going to hold. So we can use the so katoa to find out sides and angles using trigonometric functions. So let's use that information and do an example where we want to solve a right triangle. Find the missing information for the right triangle. If side B is equal to 4, and angle B has a measure of 10 degrees. So first, let's sketch this triangle out. We're going to have the angles A, B, and C, where we don't know angle A, angle B is 10 degrees, and we'll say angle C is our right angle, with sides A, B, and C, where side A is across from angle A, side C is across from angle C, and side B is equal to 4. Now, to solve this triangle, we need to find all of the missing information, so we need to find the measure of angle A, the length of side A, and the length of side C. So we'll do this one, one step at a time. We're going to start by finding the measure of angle A. Now remember in a right triangle, the two angles that are not the right angle have to add together and equal 90 degrees. So we know A plus B equals 90 degrees. If we plug the value for B in, we have A plus 10 degrees equals 90 degrees. And if we subtract 10 degrees from both sides of this equation, we get A equals 80 degrees. So next we want to find side A. Now, oftentimes when solving a right triangle, it's important to try to use the information that was given to you. Because if you use information that you found, it's possible that any rounding that you did will cause errors to come up when you're solving the rest of the triangle. So we're going to use the angle of 10 degrees, and we're going to use its opposite side of 4, and we're looking for the adjacent side, A. So we need to figure out which trig function uses opposite and adjacent. And that would be tangent. So we know that the tangent of 10 degrees should equal 4, which is the opposite side, divided by A, which is our adjacent side. We can solve this equation for A by multiplying both sides by A and dividing both sides by tangent of 10 degrees. So A would equal 4 divided by the tangent of 10 degrees. And if we put that in our calculator, we'll get A is approximately 22.69. Next, we want to find side C. Again, we're going to try to use the information that we were given, so angle 10 degrees and the opposite side of 4 degrees. And since we're looking for side C, which is the hypotenuse, we need to determine which trig function deals with opposite and hypotenuse. And of course, that trig function will be sine. So sine of 10 degrees will equal 4 over C. We can solve for C by multiplying both sides by C and dividing both sides by the sine of 10 degrees. So we get C equals 4 divided by the sine of 10 degrees. And if we put that in our calculator, we'd see that C is approximately 23.04 units of length. Now, note that we didn't have to use the sine function to solve for C. Once we found A, we would know A and B, and we could have used the Pythagorean theorem to solve for C. So when we're solving right triangles, after we know two pieces of information, we can often use several different ways to find the third piece of information. Let's look at another example where we want to solve a right triangle. This time we want to find the right triangle that has a side A equal to 2 and side B equal to 8. So the first thing that I like to do is sketch out the triangle. So the triangle we're dealing with looks like this. So we're looking for side C, angle A, and angle B. It doesn't really matter in what order we find these values. We could find any of them right away. 
but we're going to start by finding sides C. Since we already know the value of sides A and B, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. If we plug in the values that we know, we'd get C squared equals 2 squared plus 8 squared. So C squared would equal 4 plus 64, which is 68. And then to find C, we would take the square root of both sides. So C would be the square root of 68. And if we put that in our calculator, we get C is approximately 8.25. Right. Notice that if your problem asks for an exact answer, you should leave it in the form of the square root sign. If it doesn't ask for an exact answer, you can put it in your calculator to get the approximate answer. All right, now let's try to find angle B. So again, we want to try to start by working with the values that we were given. So we were given the sides of 8 and 2, and in relation to angle B, 8 is the opposite side and 2 is the adjacent side. So we want to figure out which trig function uses opposite and adjacent. And that would be tangent. So we have the tangent of B equals 8 over 2. So to find the measure of angle B, we'll take the inverse tangent of both sides. So B would equal the inverse tangent of 4. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll get B is approximately 75.96 degrees. And finally, we want to find the measure of angle A. And again, we could do this several different ways. We could use the trig functions. So we could use the tangent function for a, or we could use sine or cosine using the value of c that we've already found, but the easiest way to find an angle if you already know the other two angles is to use the fact that the two angles have to add to give you 90 degrees. So we know that a plus 75.96 should equal 90 degrees, and so that'll give us a is approximately 14.04 degrees. And so we've solved this triangle. Now let's do some examples where we're going to deal with application problems. So for our first problem, a 22-foot ladder is leaned against a house so that the top of the ladder is even with the roof of the house. If the ladder makes an angle of 67 degrees with the ground, find the distance from the roof to the ground. So we want to start by sketching out what we're dealing with. So if we're thinking about a ladder being leaned up against a house, we're going to have a right triangle that looks something like this. And next we want to label the things that we know. So the ladder, which represents the hypotenuse of this triangle, is 22 feet long. The angle that the ladder makes with the ground is 67 degrees, and we're looking for the height of the house, or the distance from the roof to the ground. So looking at the triangle that we have here, we know a 67 degree angle, we know the side opposite that, and we know the hypotenuse. So the trig function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse is sine, so we'll have sine of 67 degrees equals x over 22. And now we just need to solve for x. To solve for x, we'll multiply both sides by 22, giving us x equals 22 times the sine of 67 degrees. And if we put that in a calculator to evaluate, we'd get that x is approximately 20.25 feet. And here's one last example where we're going to solve an application problem. So a security camera in a neighborhood bank is mounted on a wall nine feet above the floor. What angle of depression should be used if the camera is to be directed to a spot six feet above the floor and 12 feet from the wall? So again, let's start by sketching out a diagram of what we're dealing with. So we have a camera that's mounted nine feet above the ground on a wall in a bank. And we want to aim it at a spot that's 6 feet above the ground and 12 feet from the wall. Given that information, we want to find the angle of depression. So what, what angle downward should the camera be pointed to look at that one spot? So using that angle of depression, we can draw ourselves a triangle. We know that the distance from the wall to the spot is 12 feet. And since the camera is 9 feet high and the spot is 6 feet high, the difference between those will be 3 feet, so that'll be the other side of our triangle. So looking at our triangle, we're looking for the angle. We know the side opposite the angle and the side adjacent to the angle. So if we use tangent, we should be able to solve this. So tangent of theta should equal 3 divided by 12. To solve for theta, we'll take the inverse tangent of both sides, so tan theta should equal the inverse tangent of 3 over 12. And if we plug that into our calculator to evaluate, we should get that theta is approximately 14.03 degrees.